What is up guys? Got another video re review for you. This time we're taking a look at Fans Project Function X1 Code, which is probably the dumbest name I've ever heard in my life, but it is Chrome Dome. So we found out that Fans Project was making Headmasters and everybody was like, awesome, cool. And this is the first one. And we got Chrome Dome first. Um, so this is the reason why I was doing G1 Chrome Dome before. So let's take a quick look at him. Oh, hold on, not yet. Um, he has the same red guns, more show accurate coloring and with the white and everything. Um, it is smaller than G1. Considerably smaller, as you can see. And there goes the backdrop. But I mean, this guy is probably the smallest fans project figure we've gotten since something like the, the Bruticus add-ons. Uh, a lot of people are complaining about that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, I think he's really cool. I think he does have a couple of little flaws, but his size isn't one of them. Um, so you notice the colors are pretty similar. Uh, the only major differences right now are... It's, it's kind of weird because his arms are back here and his legs are over here. Whereas this guy, these are his legs and these are his arms. So that's kind of weird that they're flipped, but... Um, he does have some really cool transformation gimmicks, which I think which we'll get into. Um, he is more of a like Back to the Futury because he has the these exhausts are very much. I mean, you can see them molded in this section, whereas here they're just pieces of plastic. But I think they look really cool. Uh, he is very solid. He's very sturdy. Yeah, this is a new designer. That's why it's uh, the new name and all the new stuff. It's a totally different designer than previous Fans Project offerings. Uh, one of the coolest things is on this guy, you can't open the canopy with the guns attached. This guy, you can. So we're going to take a look inside. So what you do is these guns have hinges on them. So you can bend them. And the only reason the hinges are there is so you can bend them and then get the canopy open. And when we open the canopy, we have the headmaster himself driving the little car. So, as I said previously in my Chrome Dome review, depending on which fiction you go after, this is either Stylor or Chrome Dome himself. So, take a look at him. You can see the little controls in there too, and they fold up so that you can get him in there easier. And there's a post down in there. So when you put him in, you bend him at the waist to sit him down. And there's a square hole that his legs create, and then that's what the post goes on. And then he's totally secure and solid on there. Close this, put him off to the side. Take a look at uh, Chrome Dome himself. Stylor, Chrome Dome. I'm calling him Chrome Dome because that's how I roll. So his face is really cool. It's really show accurate. If I can just get the focus. He actually does have, let me get, sorry, one second, getting G1 out. So here we have the G1 versus Fans project. Um, as you can see, the coloring is different. The shape and size are different. Even the f what will become the faces is different. It's really cool what he does. I'll show you in a minute. Um, this guy does have a little bit more posability because you can see on this guy the legs are attached at the knee. This guy they're not. See, they just you can't separate them at the knee. Um, the arms are the same, they just go straight out. There we have the side-by-side -side differences. This guy, G1, is a lot bigger. We'll take a look at his face in, it, in one of the head modes. But what's really cool is the way you transform him, you put his arms to the side, and he has this double articulation, so you bend him at the knee, and then you bend him up at the waist. But if you notice, there's this silver piece in his waist, so there's a double joint there. So the joint at the hips, and then a joint there, see? How it bends that part. So what that does, is if you look at his face, look at his eyes, when you 
bend him at that joint, his eyes appear. So that's really cool. And then you have to fold them, double fold it, like that, to get his face all the way. And then you can position the ears any way you want. I tend to leave them like that. Now one of the downsides, as we'll see, we'll show you in a minute when we actually get this guy all transformed up. These little grooves are what activate the headmaster gimmick and show the tech specs. Unfortunately, the fan project doesn't do that. It's just the head is the attachment point. There's no there's no bars to activate the gimmick. So unfortunately, it doesn't really work. We'll take a look in a minute. So, I'm going to leave the guns on. I'm going to take one more quick look at the car. It's pretty damn clean all the way around. Kind of amazing. Uh, the tolerances in the back wheels are a little bit tight. As you can see, they roll fine, but you can hear them kind of catching a little bit. You just got to wiggle everything and make sure everything's tight. And I mean, they obviously spin freely, but the tolerances are a little bit tight. So yeah, let's check this guy out, get him into robot mode. So there's a few neat little gimmicks going on. Uh, first of all, we can actually leave the guns attached. We'll just point them up during the transformation. So what we want to do first is lift the canopy open. And then hit the legs here go over the plastic bit here and then kind of snap on there. So you just kind of get in there and twist it out of the way. So as you can see, this top part, the top part goes over that pin there and then snaps just like that on there. So you can do it, just kind of twist it away and fold it out Wait, and lift the, sorry, lift the hood and fold the front bumper underneath before I break it. So yeah, like I said, just fold it over and when you do that, it'll snap in the back there. Okay. Leave the hood up a little bit. Fold these straight out. So what's really cool is there's notches missing out of the hood. And when you transform him, those notches fill in the hood. So there's a lot of little nuances like that that make it pretty damn cool. So we want to rotate it so that the wheels face front. And then fold this part back, the shin part back, and foot fold the foot a little bit forward. Or back, whatever, however you want to say it. You know, you know, depending on which way you're looking at it. Bring it 180 degrees, fold the shin up. Now, unfortunately, this does not lock anywhere. It just sits there. It's not a problem, but it just doesn't lock. Fold the foot forward. Same thing on this side. Bring everything forward a little bit so you can swing it. Shin up, foot forward, and that's his legs. Swing the whole thing 180. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to not get him all in frame right now. Come up here to the top, split him, kind of grip it up here, and split it at the arms in the center. There's a groove, there's a tab system. They tab together and they will click like that so you know that they're locked and then you just pop them off. Now, what's really cool is when you fold these, you're going to lift the, the rest of the hood the rest of the way. It was hindered before, but now you can fold it. The uh, wheels will go in the chest, and we're going to bring the arm forward a little bit, bend him at the elbow, and this is brown bit and the fist. So when you pull the fist forward, the brown bit will go underneath and kind of click in and then rotate the fist. Same thing on the other side. Bring it all the way back, so it'll just fill in, rotate the fist around. You notice the guns just stay on the back of his arms for now, so you can totally leave them in during transformation. Fold the canopy down. It doesn't lock, but it sits just fine. And now what's cool is you have to make sure, see this, there's this track in the center of his chest, and there's a, you'll see there's this kind of a groove in there, and you just slide this up and over the wheels. And that totally hides the wheels. And then we fold up the crotch, and there we basically have Chrome Dome's body complete. So we're gonna bring it up a little bit just to show you the head and everything. So now, we can totally pop the guns off 
And the gun handles are actually not round. They're kind of oblong. And so are the fists. So you might have trouble fitting some other weapons in his fists. So just be careful. And also Piog broke his gun. One of his guns. Taking it out of the package. Like up here he snapped the barrel off. Because he was anxious. So don't do that. Shove these in his fists. So you can't like rotate them in his fists really. Because they're oblong. So just don't rotate them. And Last but not least, you have to yell, head on, and you pluck his head in. And there we have Chrome Dome in robot mode. So when you plug his head in, it's just a square hole, and you literally just plug it in. And that's it. So, as far as articulation, um, one of the negatives is the shoulders, because they're squarish. You can't get a lot of in and out motion because that square part on the top, but it, they are on balls, so you do have 100, uh, 360 degrees of rotation. Elbows are on a hinge. They can go straight out, and they can go, you know, they can do more than a 90 degree arm bend, which is pretty awesome. Wrists rotate, go up and out as part of the transformation. Uh, waist all the way around. Hips are on balls. Oh, bicep swivel, thigh swivel, then at the knee actually has a double hinge at the knee part of the transformation, so you can get pretty awesome range of motion there. Nothing really forward at the knee. Uh, the foot does pivot as part of the transformation, but only forward and back, not side to side, but they're cut. As you can see, they're cut on angles here, so you can get you know a wide stance by putting it flat like that. So that's, you don't really need the ankle tilt as much as you would on other figures, per se. And then kind of miraculously, for a headmaster, we actually have head, head articulation. Um, the head itself is on this disc, which rotates, so you can actually rotate it 360 degrees. And it also has a pivot so that he can look forward. Now, unfortunately, when you do pivot him forward, it's kind of hard to see, but his head pops out, like the, the connection point. See, when you fold it back, it's not all the way down. you got to snap it the rest of the way down. So if you just put a little pressure down as you do it, it's fine. If you rotate it around and pop the head out and flip it around, you can now, and then you kind of have to fold the, the legs up a little bit. You can get them to look up. So it's really just your choice but it's more or less designed to go this way. So, before I talk about the positives and the negatives, I just want to compare him to G1. So forgive me real quick while I transform. G1's a lot bigger. There we go. Oh, I forgot the yell head on. Okay, now I haven't done this yet, so let's see what happens. It's probably not going to do anything, but. Well, you could totally put his head in there, and it looks absolutely ridiculous and doesn't do anything with the headmaster gimmick with the tech specs and yeah it's not even gonna go in we'll put him off to the side let's we'll do a quick comparison so as you can see the colors are pretty much dead on the uh, It doesn't really come through, but the browns are actually tr incredibly similar. It looks like this guy's darker, but actually seeing them doesn't really it doesn't really look that much darker. It's definitely a slightly different shade, but it's very 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 close. Um, same thing with the arms and the feet. The yellowish I think is pretty close. The head this is definitely gray and this is definitely white, but it's supposed to be white or more white, so 
this guy wins in that department. And he actually does look more like Chrome Dome than this guy. So he wins in that department as well. I'm gonna put him off to the side. And you can see the difference in the guns. It's, they're very, very similar, but you can, the little white accents make, make you know this guy a little bit cooler. And you can probably hear the house phone ringing. I'm going crazy, but I don't care. Quick size comparison, there he is with Grind Rod. He is significantly taller. And there he is with Nightmare for Stormer. So, I'm gonna just start with the things I don't like because there's only a couple. Um, number one, no tech spec gimmick. There's no flap, there's no nothing. It's just a square hole that you plug him into. Really wish they could have worked in the tech spec gimmick somehow because that's what makes Headmaster so cool. You know, it's a neat little gimmick. Kind of disappointed about that. But what are you going to do? And I forgot what the heck the other downside I had with him was. Oh, there's the shoulder. Yeah, that's right. The shoulder articulation doesn't... That's as far wide as you can get his arms. Is that. It's not the biggest deal. I'm more... I'm actually kind of disappointed that they couldn't figure out how to get the tech spec gimmick to work. I don't care if they weren't really compatible with the G1, because obviously it's going to be a different size and and all that, but I would have liked to see the tech spec, the tech spec gimmick in there. So it's kind of disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. Um, everything else I think is awesome. I mean, the head looks really amazing. It's totally accurate. I really dig that you don't have to hide his face like you do with the G1. Because the G1, all you did was fold this flap forward and that hit his face. You know, this guy, the, the crests are the arms. You can see the crests on the G1, but those aren't his arms. His arms are back here. So, I mean, little things like that just go that little extra mile and make him, you know, totally awesome. I love the chest gimmick. Um, let me show you that again. So, you'll see the track, you line it up. You slide it down. And I think that's awesome that that hides the wheels. I mean, he's he is on the smaller side, but I mean, I think it's a totally doable size. I think it's you know, it works. I don't you know I'm not upset that they're smaller, but I mean on the G1 you can see the wheels are just hanging out on the feet and on the hips, and this guy does a really good job of hiding the wheels. You only you see a little bit of them on the shins. And the chest ones you don't see at all, so that's pretty, you know, damn awesome if you ask me. And I don't like saying if you ask me, so I'm not going to try, I'm trying not to say that. So yeah. If you can find this guy, pick him up. The only problem is they were having a bunch of charity deals with him. So if you bought him 20 bucks, went to a charity, no matter who you bought it from basically. So he's pretty much sold out everywhere, but I got the pre-order in as soon as they started doing that. If you can find him, pick him up. He's awesome. Uh, I really always dug the Headmasters, so I'm going to try to get all of them. So we'll see how that goes. But I mean, I totally love him. I dig him. I think his size is fine. I think the engineering is pretty awesome. Uh, I really, I do kind of want, wish these shins locked in, but they, it's not a problem. It's just more of a, I want to feel a little bit better that they snap into place kind of thing than they don't, even though they don't. The arms snap in, which is awesome. It's just totally, it, just an awesomely engineered toy. Um, so yeah, if you can pick this guy up, I say go for him. Uh, if not, you're going to have to <laughs> be stuck with watching me review it. Or you can always pick up a G1. Hi. So yeah, this has been the video review for Fans Project Function X1 Code, aka the stupidest name ever invented, also known as Classics 
Chrome Dome.